Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to XPS Tech. My name is Vineet and in today's video, we'll check out one of the most popular and one of the oldest Linux distribution that is Debian GNU Linux. It was started way back in 1993 and has almost completed 22 years of life. And through all these years, it has built a reputation as one of the most stable and most favored Linux distribution out there. It is so popular that many other Linux distribution like Ubuntu, Nopix and several others are actually based on Debian Linux. It is not only popular on Earth but also in space. Well, in 2013, NASA on its International Space Station shifted all its computer from Windows operating system to Debian Linux. So in today's video, we'll take an in-depth look and do a complete overview of Debian Linux. We'll cover its history, we'll talk about Debian project, the various releases up till now, and we'll check out the features and see why this distribution has been so famous among Linux users. And in the end, I'll also run you through the installation of the latest version of Debian Linux, which is version 8.1, codename Jesse. Alright, so let's begin today's video. Now let's start with the history of this project. Now the project was started on 16th of August 1993 by a developer named Ian Mudrock. Now he wrote a Debian manifesto which was published on 1st of June 1994 which dictates the principle that should be followed in the development of Debian Linux. Now the Debian project is a volunteer organization with three main or three core documents. First is the Debian social contract which has five basic principles by which the projects and its developers conduct their affairs. Second you have the Debian FSG or free software guideline that defines which software is permissible in this distribution. And at last you have the Debian constitution which describes the organization structure, powers and responsibilities of all the appointments that are in the project. Currently, there are over 1000 developers which contribute to this project from all over the world. A project leader is elected once every year by the developers and the current Debian project leader is Neil McGovern which was elected on 19th of April 2015. Now before I go any further, let's talk about the name Debian GNU Linux. Now the first part of Debian is taken from the Ian Murdoch then girlfriend Deborah Lynn and the last part is actually the name of the founder Ian Murdoch. Now it is called GNU Linux because the kernel which is used in this operating system is the Linux kernel and the other basic operating system application like shell, compilers and libraries are used from the GNU project which is nothing but a collaboration of free softwares. Now let's talk about all the releases of Debian. Now Debian Linux had 13 major OS releases since version 1.1 codename Buzz which was released on 17th of June 1996 all the way through version 8 which was released on 25th of April 2015 and had codenamed Jesse. Now Debian project strives for having one major stable release every two years. Also every version is given a codename. For example, Debian 8 is called Jesse. Previous version, Debian 7 was codenamed VZ. Now these codenames are taken from the characters of famous Toy Story movie because at the time of starting Debian project, Ian Mudrock was working at Pixar on the Toy Story project. Now one of the most important aspects of any Linux distribution is its repositories or repos. Now a repos in Linux term is nothing but a sort of a warehouse that contains all the packages that can be used for that particular Linux distribution. Now Debian Linux has four main repos. First is the stable repo which contains all the packages associated with the current stable release. Then you have old stable that contains all the packages of the previous stable release and that is usually maintained for one year or so. Then you have two main development repos, testing and unstable. Now, both of these repos are updated constantly till the next stable release. Now, whenever a new package is developed, it first arrives at the unstable repo. And after thorough testing, the package is moved from unstable to testing repo after it meets certain criteria and free from critical bugs. Now, there is also two non-release repo 
experimental and backport now experimental repo contains those packages that are tested and declared not suited for unstable repo and backport repo contains updated packages for the current stable release now apart from these official repos there are also two non-official repo that are also supported by debian linux non-free repos and contrib repo now non-free repo contains packages that do not comply with the free software guideline or fsg which is one of the main core document of debian project and then you have contrib repo stands for contributory repo it contains packages that do comply to fsg but they fail on other requirements like they may depend on other non-free packages for running them or for building them so these were the main repos of debian gnu linux debian linux not only works on computers or laptops but it also support a host of other platforms like embedded devices professional servers mainframes the latest version of debian linux supports up to 10 architectural ports officially and there are several other unofficial ports that are also available. Now the default package manager in Debian Linux is the advanced packaging tool or the apt tool. But it also supports the legacy dpackage tool for installing .deb files. Now there are also GUI alternatives for installing softwares. You have synaptic package manager and aptitude which is a GUI front end to the command line app tool. Now the desktop environment supported by Debian, it supports all the major desktop environment like Genome, KDE, LXDE and XFCE and apart from that you also have Cinnamon, Mate, Openbox and you get these options to choose which desktop environment you need during installation. So that was all about the theory of Debian GNU Linux. Now let's go to a computer and do a live demo on how to install Debian Linux on your computer. Now here I am on my MacBook Pro and I'll show you how to install the latest version of Debian Linux on a VM. Now the first step is to download the installer image. To do that open up your favorite browser and visit this website which is debian.org slash distrib. Now here you have the option to either download the installer image or you can also buy DVDs or CDs from one of the vendors. You can also try Debian Linux live before installing. Now there are also two kinds of installation image. One is a small installation image. Now this require a internet connection during the installation. The other is a large or complete installation image that does not require an internet connection during the installation process. So I recommend to download the complete installation image. Now here also you have the option to download either the 64-bit version or the 32-bit version and also for a CD or a DVD. So I'm going to click on 64-bit PC torrent DVD. Now here if you scroll down you have multiple torrent files numbered as DVD1, DVD2 and DVD3 these are the torrent files for the installer images now you do not have to download all the dvds just dvd1 will suffice and you will be able to install the latest version of debian successfully the other two images contains host of other packages and the debian gnu linux supports as i said 43000 software packages so these were included in the dvd2 and dvd3 so we just require dvd1 for the installing Debian Linux so I'm just going to click here and this will download the torrent file and now you can run this torrent file on your favorite torrent client and download the installer image. I have already done so so I'm just going to minimize this and go to VMware Fusion and to install Debian Linux all I have to do is click on add and click on new and then install from disk or images click continue now I'm going to select the place where I have saved the Debian installer image. There it is. And click open. And then click continue. It's going to ask which version it is. So I'm just going to go and give it Debian. I think Debian 7x. I'm just going to change the name. Customize settings. Just going to change this to Debian. 8.1 64-bit click save all right now press the play button all right so now we are in the main screen of the installer so I'm just gonna choose graphic install and press enter 
All right, I'm going to choose English as the preferred language. United States. The location. And the keyboard, American English. All right, now it will run through the usual installation process. I'm going to fast forward it and pause and, and come back whenever there is any requirement for me to explain. All right, now it says to configure your network and enter the host name. I'm just going to leave that as Debian and click continue. Now again, it's asking for the domain name. I'm just going to leave that blank and click continue. Now this is very, very important. Asking you to enter your root password, which is nothing but your administrator password. So just type your password. I'm going to just enter one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And click continue. Now it's asking you to create a separate user account since it is not advisable to work in your root account. So I'm just going to create XPS tech as a user account and click continue. Your user account name is XPS tech. That's fine. Click continue and a password for your user account. So I'm just going to type in four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and click continue. Now to configure the clock, uh, you can choose select your time zone. I'm just going to click on continue. All right, now we have reached the partition disk segment. This is very, very important and you need to be very, very careful, especially if you're having a multiple OS installation or multiple OS configuration on your computer. I am just installing it on a VMware, so I'm just going to give it to use the entire disk and click continue. It's showing up the disk where I'm going to install Debian Linux. So this is fine. I'm just going to click continue. I'm going to leave all files in one partition and click continue. All right. So it has configured the disk and now just click on continue to finish partitioning and writing changes to the disk. Now it is again giving a warning that it is going to write changes to the disk. So we want to continue. So just choose yes and click continue. All right, so now we are in the installation process wherein if you have downloaded the other installer installation image like DVD two and DVD three, then you can provide that installation image right now so that so that all the packages are also installed during the installation process. In this demonstration, I did not download the other DVDs, so I'm just going to choose no and click continue. It's asking if you wish to configure a network mirror. I'm just going to choose no and click continue. All right, now it's ask if you want to participate in the package usage survey. I'm just going to choose no and click continue. And now it's in the select and install software. Now, since I'm connected to the internet, this step is um, it is running and if you're not connected to the internet during this process this may say that installation failed and it will take you to the other steps of installation it will not abort the installation process it will just not run this particular step all right so for this particular setup I'm just going to choose genome uh, as my dis default desktop environment you can choose your preferred desktop environment in the screen and click continue All right, so now we are in the screen where it asks us where we want to install our bootloader. Since I'm installing it on a VMware, so I'm installing it on the master boot record. If you have multiple operating system installed on your hard disk, installed on your computer, you just need to be a little careful and need to know where you actually want to install the bootloader. For more information regarding the correct configuration, uh, of your partitioning scheme and the correct place to install the grub bootloader. Check out my previous video where I have shown the correct way to partition and install the bootloader. So I'm just going to choose yes here and click on continue. All right. So I'm just going to give it the slash dev slash SDA. That's my primary 
device or the only hard disk as I'm running on a VMware. So just click continue. All right, so now it says the installation is complete. So I'm just gonna click on continue and this will boot the machine and give us the freshly installed Debian GNU Linux. All right, so we are in the uh, login screen. So I'm just gonna choose the XPS Tech user account that we created during the installation and type in the login password, which was 456789 and click on sign in. All right, so now we are on the desktop screen and as you can see, we have successfully installed the latest version of Debian Linux. In fact, let me just open up a terminal and type in lsb underscore release dash a for all and press enter so as you can see uh, we ha we are currently running debian GNU linux 8.1 code name jesse so that was all f regarding debian GNU linux and that was all for today i hope this video was useful to you uh, if you like this video and want to see more such videos kindly click on the like button if you have any comment or suggestion or feedback please type that in in the comment box and just before i go i just want to give a huge shout out to everybody who have subscribed to my channel this means a lot thank you guys and i'll see you next time